while i was practicing my chanting routine wo 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 i received enlightenment to follow the path of overthinking love mechanics the series welcome to all you overthinkers thinkers and non-thinkers as we overthink episode 3 of love mechanics which is going to be in two parts hello let's begin guys Just like episode 1 and 2, episode 3 is essentially the same story as Ian of Love Love Mechanics, but a more detailed version of the dynamics of the relationship between Mark and V. Episode 3 broke my heart so many times. It begins with Mark waking up V, who is sleeping on the sofa in his room. V rushes back to Ploy's dorm thinking that she might be worried about him, only to find out that she hasn't returned and is working on her report at her friend's place. It is shown through a flashback of the previous episode that only Mark had seen her with another man. We had no idea about it leaving Mark feeling uneasy and in a dilemma. In the next few scenes, we seems to be enjoying his newfound closeness and interactions with Mark and wants to spend more time with him. On the other hand, Mark is pulling back. For example, we insisting on giving mark a ride to the university even though he kept on refusing we wanting to have a meal with mark and mark refusing again but we finds mark eating alone and joins him anyway just then ploy calls we who speaks to her sweetly making mark visibly irritated he can feel that we cares for her with a resigned attitude unconsciously mark starts picking garlic from we's food since we doesn't like garlic He realizes what he's doing only when we teases him about it. There's an understated sweetness about the garlic picking scene that War brings in with his natural and effortless acting. But right after that, he tells V to stop doing all of this just because he feels responsible. Followed by a very good dialogue where he says people are together because of love, not responsibility. He proceeds to give V a reality check reminding him that Mark is the one who was following V's friend and that V hates him and that now he isn't following Ba anymore we should stop following him as well and go to her to deliver the biggest blow although with apparent difficulty but Mark manages to tell V that he is just a senior for him V is shaken All the blows hit home and we is injured and we felt it. But we being persistent as always literally drags Mark away from his friends to take him somewhere. It's we's thing I guess dragging and pulling Mark away to take him wherever he wants. My thing is dragging the doll around the house till its leg comes out. Thankfully all of Mark's limbs are intact when we tells him that he wants to make sure that Mark really doesn't have feelings for Ba anymore and to understand the way Mark looks at him. We tease him that maybe he likes someone else now, wanting to hear his own name maybe. Mark's final comeback landed right where it hurts when he says anyone but you. Broke my heart a little. Punch to the gut. Mhm. We takes Mark to the swimming pool where Ba and Kana being a sweet couple. Ba asks for a swimming race and we suggest that Ba team up with Kana while he and Mark will be a team. While waiting for Ba to finish up his lap, Kana kept cheering loudly. Mark on the other hand just keeps looking at we with laser intensity and mouthing come on, come on, wanting with every cell in his body for we to win. His breathing getting faster, tension rising, and yet never speaking out. My heart was racing with Mark, and the silent cheering had me close to tears with all the pent up emotions. A lovely scene, and once again, a shirtless war made my heart lose its rhythm and started to beat erratically. My only issue: I wanted another race to have some more screen time of these boys without the shirts on. As soon as we comes out of the water he goes away to get some supplies to clean Mark's injured foot that he had noticed to Mark's surprise and our delight we finally believes that Mark doesn't have feelings for Ba now because he could tell by the way he looks at Ba Ploy's call interrupts the moment though Layers over layers of unresolved issues 
There are a lot of microfacial expressions by War during the whole pool scene that speak louder than words. He excels at them. Ba being Wee's good friend has a heart to heart with him about what he's doing and what he would do once he has the answers he's looking for. We does seem to ponder on it. A significant moment happens when Mark is out drinking with his friends and a boy approaches him to join them and asks for Mark's contact information. Mark refuses both without hesitation, indicating that either he is not interested in a relationship at all right now or there's someone else on his mind already. His friends tease him about it and War delivers an adorable scene by refuting their comments with a smile that he cannot seem to stop, with a look that says he is shy but he is definitely hiding something, smiling, being coy about it. As a bonus, Mark's t-shirt sleeves are rolled up during the scene, which is a visual that pleases your senses. We finds out that Ploy has an unfinished report and needs to sleep at her friend's place again. He is supportive, but he is sad as well. Meanwhile, Mark sees Ploy with the other guy again. In his rising dilemma, he asks his senior, who is V's friend, about their relationship to gauge if Ploy could be cheating. The very next time when they are alone in the university waiting for the rain to stop, Mark once again tells V that they shouldn't spend time together. Both of them use some harsh words things they don't mean, with the true feelings buried under the layers of wounds that they were giving each other. It is so obvious that they are uttering these, these words with difficulty, but they do anyway. This is where they decide to end things as just two people who are in the same faculty. It is a scene where both Mark and we hurt each other, but they are hurting themselves even more. Our hearts were broken. And War's ability to emote through his eyes, subtle expressions and body language stabbed our hearts which were already broken. After all was said and done, we insisted on giving Mark his umbrella, as it was still raining. Needed some biscuits to cheer me up. Both of them were in such despair that they reached home all wet anyway. The episode gets heated up and more intense after this, and so does our recap. Thank you for watching part 1 of the video. To watch the recap of the rest of the episode, click part 2 right here on the screen. See you there!